did someone petition you for a K1 visa before? Like that, guys. And then they are asking when if you say yes, okay? Hello, guys. Good morning. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is I'm going to share with you what is the possible questions on the K-1 visa interview questions at the U.S. Embassy Manila, Philippines. So this is based on my experience, guys, okay? So but before that, I want to say shout out to our subscribers and also to our new viewers who never tired of watching, commenting, and sharing our videos. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. But if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and also hit that notification bell so that if I have a new upload videos you will be notified as soon as uh, if you like this kind of videos don't forget to like and share to your friends if they have the same problems with us we can help them to give some information and tips so let's go back to our topic Claimer, this video is for educational purposes only so let us further do let's start hello guys i'm back again this is travel discoveries so today's video is i gonna share with you the k1 visa interview questions or the possible questions that they will ask you during your interview appointment in the u.s embassy manila philippines so this is based on my experience guys during my interview appointment in the interview appointment guys the inside the u.s embassy is it's like the same on the airport that it's like a glass window and they are using a microphone so you can hear it what is the questions that they are asking to you further though let's start there is two types uh, the console they are asking to you so the part one is all about you the beneficiary and the part two is all about the petitioner or your fiance or husband so we will start on the part one so which is the beneficiary so the first questions that they are asking is what is your name of course they were asking what is your name and surname and the second is where do you live or is the address or reside or is the previous address that you are residing and then the third question is they are asking about your religious backgrounds religious backgrounds guys is they're asking about this um about your religious if you are a catholic you are a baptist or whatever they're asking for that but in some consul they never asked so again the consul is not the same as the others they are asking it the other is not so it's better that they'll memorize this because who knows they will ask to you too so the fourth question asking is what do you do for a living so they are asking it means if what is your work okay so the next question is did you work outside the country so they are asking if you work outside the country guys aside from the philippines so for example you work outside the country you need to say yes but if no uh, said no okay <clears throat> and then once that you answer is yes they will asking you if you have a police clearance certificate so for those applicants that you work outside the country you need to prepare now the police clearance certificate okay so you can apply through online so all you need to do only is to research what is the requirements on that country how to get the police clearance certificate so the next question that you are asking is worst country so they are asking which country you work at okay so what is your position there like you're working for what uh, or if w <clears throat> But again, guys, it's not always they are asking like that. It depends, okay? And then the next question that they are asking is, did you apply for a K-1 visa before? So once that you said yes, they were asking you, who is your petitioner? Why you cancel your K-1 visa before? Something like that. But if you didn't apply a K-1 visa, or, uh, before, you should say no. 
Or there's another term that they are asking. Did someone petition you for a K-1 visa before? Like that, guys. And then they are asking when if you say yes, okay? So that is usually the questions for the beneficiary. It's not too much long. Because, guys, the question, you know, the time limit for every console that they are spending for one applicant is the longer is 30 minutes. But usually is 10 minutes only, okay? So, again, that depends for the console. So, in the part two, <clears throat> so this is all about the petitioner. So, it means it's all about your husband or your fiancé. So, usually the first question that they are asking is, is the name of your petitioner or your fiancé? And then next is how old he is. And then where did he live or where where is his address? So, it means where he live in the u.s and the address the previous address and they are asking also guys if do you have uh, relatives in the u.s if you have relatives in the u.s you will say yes but if no say no okay so the next question is what he do for a living so it means what he do for a living is they are asking what is the work of your fiance if you said Yes, and then they will ask, what is the name of the company? Okay, so the next question is your marital status. If they are asking if you are single, yes, for you and for your petitioner is he is a single or married. So usually you need to say yeah, uh, divorce, right? Or single. If he is divorced, you need to say divorce, but he is a single, said single, okay? Because usually if you said he is married, it's not, you, will, you will be disqualified, guys. Because you need to apply if you are both single or divorced, right? So the next one is how many times he got divorced. So you need to ask your PNC or your husband what is the name of his ex-wife. Because usually he is asking what is the name and where she live, okay? And how many children he have. So you need to know that. Okay. And how did you meet? So it means how did you meet? It means how you meet your husband or your fiancé. Either online dating site or a friend's introduced to you. Or you meet in Facebook or whatever. What is the reason guys? Okay. So, and then, where did you meet? So, this is again, where did you meet? It means the first time that you met. Where did you meet? In the mall, in the Philippines, in the airport, okay? So, that is it. And the next question is, when did you meet? So, it is again, when did you meet? It means, what is the date that you meet? For example, you met uh, 2015, Okay, you need to memorize that also, okay? So, the next question is, did he visit you before? So, of course, if he visit you, you said yes. If not, no. And then, the next question is, do you have plans for a wedding? So, usually, they are asking guys, for me, they ask that. Yeah, he said, do you have any plans for the wedding? Uh, when? And how many persons do you plan to invite in your wedding? Where is that? <laughs> for me, only my experience, guys. They ask that for me. And then, do you have a plan for the honeymoon? Where you <laughs> do the honeymoon? Yeah, they will ask that, guys. But again, it depends for the console. The other, they ask that. for, And then, the other is not. So, it's better that you know it already. You talk to your fiancé about that so that you have something to answer. But you need to be in real guy, okay? Don't lie. So what is the truth? Just tell it, okay? So the next question is, does he have any criminal records? Yes, this one, they asked it also, guys. During my interview, they asked me if my Piancy have a criminal record. So I said, no, because nothing. I know it. I asked him. <laughs> yeah, but my 
co-applicant. Uh, I heard also the consul because he is in the window next to me. The consul asked if, if his fiancée have any criminal records and he said, I don't know. And then the consul said, did you know that your fiancée have a criminal record before? But it's uh, like a assault on the guys. And he said, no. And then, you know it already that he have a criminal record. Still, do you want to pursue to, to marry your fiancée? And they said, yes. So, it depends for you guys. You need only to be honest, okay? And then, the next question is, where did you plan to live and why? So, usually, they are asking that also. Mm-hmm. So you know already where you want to live with you, <laughs> with your husband to be right. So that's it. Only the possible questions that they are asking, guys. But you, like what I said, every console is not the same. The others they are asking, and then the others is not. So it depends. So it's better that you need to know more about your PNC so that. Uh, they will ask you questions about him, you know, everything, okay? And also, I will give you a bonus tips based on my experience only, okay? So, during your interview appointment, you need to go early, guys, because when you reach to the embassy, there is a long line, okay? So, for me, I went so really early, like around 4 a.m., guys, I'm there already, but I was so surprised because there is a lot of applicants already in a long line. So imagine, so it's better that you go early in your time schedule, okay? Yes, don't bring a bag because uh, the bag is not allowed inside the U.S. Embassy. So you need to leave it there. So there is no baggage counter there that you can leave your bag. No, so it's better you leave in your hotel and bring only your documents actually guys you know those ladies there that they are selling and um, refreshments food uh, water um, they are selling there guys they are offering to keep your bags but you need to pay them so if i were you it's better that you left your bag in your hotel because you know we didn't know we didn't know them right so it's better that but if you want to rest okay it's okay you can pay it but it looks like they are okay too they are a nice person so so that there is no hassles it's better that you left your bag in your hotel okay and don't bring money because you have nothing you cannot bring the especially the the coins guys you cannot bring that because embassy if you enter in the u.s embassy entrance the machine will read if you have a coins it will beeping so it's better you cannot bring that it's better you let where left it okay so you need to bring only the exact amount that you can you know <clears throat> or the paper bell you can bring the paper bell but the coins is not so the next one is bring your documents only so it means that uh, the important documents that you really need and in your interview appointment you need to bring that okay so my tips is the first one that you need to bring is your MRB slip your documents for your petitioner affidavit of support the irs the w2 pay stabs you need to bring that guys because usually they are asking especially the w2 and the irs okay and also your police clearance certificate if you work outside the country because for me the you know in the initial screening which is the philip Filipino consul she was asking if did you work outside the country once that you see yes of course you need to be honest right they will ask you your police clearance certificate so it's better that once that your interview appointment is not yet you need to prepare now you need to apply now to get that police clearance certificate because you really need it okay <clears throat> 
But again, there is some other consul that they are not asking. But usually during my time is they are asking, guys. And I, you can hear it what they are asking in the other applicants because as I told you is a window and then they are using a microphone so you can hear what they are asking for what is the questions okay and the next one is don't bring a gadgets like USB um, battery operated like this one the watches rings I don't know but the other something I saw the others they are wearing their ear earrings earrings is not allowed to yeah earrings battery operated machine computer phone mobile everything guys that gadget is not allowed okay so you need to leave it in your hotel and the next one is wear a proper attire so that's the most important that is a proper attire even though you are wearing a pants it's okay the most important is formal okay they are not accepting only if you are wearing uh, sleeves yeah and then sh it's like a sh dress yes but the dresses should be long okay and then the next one is print the ds160 or ds260 confirmation page with barcode so you need to bring that guys it's really important when you enter in the entrance of the u.s embassy there is a officer there that they are collecting your ds160 confirmation page with barcode especially the barcode guys because they scan it the barcode so you need to print that okay and also don't be nervous because if you're nervous you know you forgot everything so just be calm okay just do a deep breathing and everything will be fine okay so the at the first time yes you'll be scared and nervous but once that they are started asking you slowly slowly you forgot everything especially if they are so very friendly yeah i really assured you guys that the console there is they are so very friendly and nice so don't be scared okay i'm sure that you will pass your interview okay because if you know your pnc i'm sure you will be passed and don't you worry it's so very basic only the, what they are asking again don't be nervous and go early so if you have some any questions just comment down below in my description box and i will answer as soon as and guys don't forget also to watch some of my videos just check on my playlist i have some mini videos there that related to the key one visa journey okay so i have some mini questions and don't worry because i will make some video about when you come here in the u.s about to adjust your status i will make a video also of, of that so that you have a guide okay so that's it for today so i hope this video can help you and then if you like this kind of video don't forget to subscribe and like and share to your friends so that if they have some problems the same as we can give some ideas and information what to do okay so that's it only for today thank you so much for watching and see you in my next vlog bye